Well, you know, the Skydiggers have always had a certain country-flavored sensibility, which I've always found kind of odd for a band who calls Toronto home. But with a fondness for acoustic guitars and a talent for vocal harmonies, the band has always been categorized on the rural side of rock. So perhaps it's not surprising that the Skydiggers' brand new record, City of Sirens, looks at the urban life with caution, not contempt, but definitely caution. As the world speeds up, City of Sirens is a collection of songs about slowing down and finding balance. Andy Mays and Josh Finlayson founded the Skydiggers in 1987. They scored success with their early 90s hits, A Penny More, and a song that I consider one of the greatest songs ever written in Canada, I Will Give You Everything. And in 1993, the Skydiggers won the Most Promising Group Award at the Junos, This, despite the fact that the band had already been touring and recording for years, go figure. Since then, the Diggers have kept busy, steadily releasing albums and touring back and forth across Canada many times over this year. The Skydiggers celebrate their 20th anniversary. City of Sirens is the group's seventh album and their first studio album in five years. Founding members Andy Mays and Josh Finlayson are the primary songwriters and the pair that have been Skydiggers since day one, and they join me live in Studio Q. Hello, gentlemen. Hi, Jean. How are you doing? Good to have you back here. Great to be here. You've got a good, you got a smirk on your face, Andy. Oh, I love watching your work. Yeah. <laughs> thank, you, thank you very much. I appreciate it. So to speak. Uh, well, let me start with you, Andy. This is, uh, first of all, it's great to hear a new a new studio album from you guys. Uh, uh, I'm sure fans of the Skydiggers will be thrilled to to hear that uh, you you're releasing something new. Uh, uh, tell me about City of Sirens. Uh, what does the title mean for you? Well, I live at uh, I live at uh, Dufferin and Bloor, and it seems to be a uh, in downtown Toronto. Yeah, in downtown Toronto, and uh, and it seems to just be a, a an area where there's a confluence of there's a, up up the street there's a uh, there's a fire hall, and then just a, a few blocks over there's an ambulance station, and then just south the other way there's a police station. It just seems like there's there's just sirens going all day long, hmm. and and it just creates a sense of urgency, so I, I thought it would it would be an interesting backdrop to, you know, the sense of urgency that that we s- feel in our lives at times too, in relationships and and even since uh, you know since September 11th of 2001, mm. there's been I find more of an urgency in the in the city. Just you know, people just. Hmm. As I was, uh, you know, I was talking about in the in, in in the introduction the the interesting juxtaposition of what I've always uh, people have always heard your music to be somewhat uh, uh, you know I don't want to say agrarian but but you know <laughs> but 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 in a sense it, it it feels like it comes from a, a rural place an organic place acoustic uh, some of the time some of the images that have accompanied your records back to restless or mm-hmm. you know images of of rural life and yet you have been city guys and also guys who've made your career uh, in cities and and seem to have a, a, an interesting relationship with that and I don't want to get too philosophical on question two, but that almost seems like a metaphor for Canada. Uh, people, uh, 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 people who see ourselves as, uh, uh, in, in some cases, uh, in a place of big expanses and big ideas, but are, uh, for sure these days, are city people, are, are largely an urban population. Can you reflect on that? Well, it, it's, uh, it's interesting to, uh, to you know, you're, uh, you're, what you're saying is something that I think is always been uh part of how we've uh when we're writing songs when we're traveling uh no one ever believed that we we're from toronto you know we andy and i are probably uh a rare breed yourself included you know born and raised in toronto how many people do you meet that were actually born and raised here most people you meet aren't from here right. um, i was born in london england but grew up in toronto gotcha. close yeah, yeah close <laughs> yeah big city yeah <laughs> um i um I I find that uh, that this the city is uh, it, it it was a big small town when we were growing up. It's turned into something that that it uh, you know, whether it's an aspiring New York or a New York or a bigger international city, it's something that we've sort of grown up with as well. So I don't know whether the uh, the music and the imagery is a, a result of um, wanting to kind of recognize where you came from and who you are and how you fit into a city like this. I find it's a, you know, it's such, it's such an expensive city to live in and to be in. Um, but you choose to stay. It's it's home. Is it is it is there a musical route to the juxtaposition? I mean, do, is it because 
you you can trace your influences, your ideas, your musical um, enlightenment back to the great Canadian tradition of uh, Neil Young, Joni Mitchell, Gordy Lightfoot, who you know you could consider a more rural um, uh, perspective that they would bring to their writing. Yeah, I you know I I think about this a lot, and uh, it, it's it's a hard question to to answer, and and all those people are. Uh, uh, you know, Gordon Lightfoot grew up in Aurelia. Um, his music is so reflective of this. It's so much a part of of me, anyway. I mean, that's that was sort of the soundtrack of my life. Yeah. Ian, and, Ian and Sylvia, Gordon Lightfoot. That's still it's still a reference for me all the time in uh, music. I'm uh, I'm. Your your question has got me thinking. I'm stumped as to. How to, how to <laughs> Do you want to come to, back another day? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> take some time away and come back. <laughs> you want to take a shot at this, Andy? I've got other questions I can get to if you'd like. In my mind, I I, I don't know. It's just a, it's it's a, it's just a, a a style of music certainly that we were mm. just drawn to. I think. And I think it was, you know, we we also started playing in bands uh, in the punk era. And we're influenced by that, and I think that the you know certainly with with the acoustic music, for us, uh, you know what what it shared with the punk music was a was an honesty and a directness, you know. And we're, right on. Yeah. We're big Clash fans and and that sort of thing, and and just the that there's a directness to the to the music. Uh, there's a, another juxtaposition on this record, which is that uh, despite these themes on the album that I was just talking about of of, of stress, panic, struggle, you were talking about mm-hmm. the sirens that you hear at uh, at at Dufferin and, and, and Bloor. There's also a sense of peace to this record. Uh, one of your songs, Incurable, is built around the lyric, mortality is incurable, which seems pretty bleak. <laughs> but um, but there's a tone to the music that suggests uh, acceptance rather than despair. Does that, uh, what I'm saying, resonate for you, Josh? Um, that song in particular, um, uh, that line came from, I, re- I read an article in the, in the, the newspaper, and it was this 93-year-old man who was uh, writing a, a blog and it was basically the blog was uh, uh, he was writing every day until he died. Basically, his wife had just died, and it was a it, it was uh, it was one of the lines in the uh, in the blog. And it just it just was so interesting. This guy was all alone, and uh, you know he was just waiting around to die. And a lot of, uh, that was, and it is sort of bleak, but there was something about it that was also kind of compelling, and that he wanted to document it, and it it was. That's that was where that song started from. The piece that um, uh, P E A C E that that you're um, that you might have uh, felt from that, that that man blogging and and that I feel from your record. I wonder if the Sky Diggers, twenty years on, um, a band that you've made a career from, but uh, a, a modest career. You, you you know you're not Kanye West. Uh, uh, um, do you do you have a sense of peace about you that you didn't have before? There's a confidence on this record that says, you know, here we are. This we're the sky diggers. This yeah. is what we do. Yeah, I Absolutely, think. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I, it, I I think we have found a peace. I think, you know, I I've certainly at points in our in our career been guilty of trying too hard, you know, and you really want something to happen, and you you, and and I think. Uh, I think the greatest lesson that I've learned is that sometimes things just happen when they're supposed to happen and that you can't force it. And I'm lucky that I've got a couple of great partners who have uh, who have let me be that way, you know. And Although it's a balancing act, right? Because to, yeah. to, to, to have a living, to make a living, if not to make it in the music business, you do have to try hard. Mm, absolutely. You know, you have to. Absolutely. But yeah. there, there's trying hard and then there's trying too hard, you know, which mm. is... And, and forcing things yeah, that, forcing. that don't need to be forced. There's a there's a new um, instrumental uh, addition on this record. There's uh, there's more keyboards. There's a, mm-hmm. there's piano and keyboards on this record. And and uh, I understand that you started writing up for this record for the first time on piano, Josh, eh, rather than on guitar. Is that true? Well, there's a couple of well, one song in, in particular, uh, and it's an older song. I started pl- I taught myself to play piano, uh, you know, probably 15 years ago uh, from the uh, guitar. I don't play great, but it it was. It was just a, a new way of finding, uh, of not repeating yourself, or at least convincing yourself that you're not repeating yourself. And so we did a bunch of that stuff. But um, in the process of uh, putting this record together, we uh, we met and uh, started playing with Michael Johnston, who's uh, playing on the record. And he uh, wrote some songs for the record with Andy and I. Um, and it just became a 
a, a great instrument uh, for the voicings. The the just the the music was uh, you could create a bigger sound with less. Uh, Does it change the music? Does it change the way you write songs? A little bit more Captain uh, and Te- Captain and Tennille. No? <laughs> <laughs> more Tennille, less Captain. Right. Susie, um, uh, 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 sure, it definitely changes it. I mean, you, you know, and, and that's what you. I, that's what I want. I always want something different, something that that sounds different, that that uh, changes me and changes the uh, the idea of what I think the band is. Uh, and for me, that moving forward is 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 essential. And let me let me p- pick up on that. The idea of what the band is has the has the idea of what the band is, and perhaps the imp- the imperative of what the band should be, and the message of the band changed uh, in the last twenty years. Andy, is it different now I, from what it was? I don't think so. Certainly, the subject matter is still, you know, basically sort of the personal as it relates to, you know, trying to find the personal in in things, but doing it on a on a universal level, you know, and the, trying to write about things that everyone can identify with. So I I, I don't think it's changed that much. All right, thanks, guys. Again, thanks, the Sky Diggers, pleasure to have you here. Cheers.